YouTube. This is Mark Twain Tarantula, the CEO of TarantulaFacts.com. Everything is gun smoke. So today we'll be doing a revised video on my collection. I will be giving some tips on how to uh, keep tarantulas. Um, I guess as we go along, I'll break it down for you. So um, also, I have some new changes coming with TarantulaFacts.com. New pages added. Um, new pictures added. I was getting some flack for some pictures that um, I utilized off of Google but I mean at the end of the day why take beautiful pictures if you don't want the world to look at them but since then I've posted a few of my own tees up on the website and a friend of mine um, Monique I appreciate her for allowing me to use some of um, her photos from her Facebook and her name is also on the website under the pictures so you you can find her on Facebook. So without further ado, let's get into my tees. Okay, so I'm gonna look at my whole entire collection and I'll give you the reason on why I keep these three tranches over here away from the rest of these tranches. Alright, so let's get into it. First up we have my HNC Trinidad Gold. Um, just experienced the moment not so long ago got some size to it now so um yeah there she goes let's get to the next tee here we have the mega for Bima robustum uh the colombian giant red leg and i like really never see this spider i see its feet from the beginning of its enclosure and that's its feet right there but i don't know if you can see it but yeah that's about as much as we're going to see this trench so we're going to move on to the next one Way we don't have to um, do notice though that I do keep it very moist in here, humid. We'll get to that in a second. Okay, here we have my Therophosis Thermi. This is my female Goliath Burgundy, uh, my female Burgundy Goliath Bird Eater. Excuse me, her name is Egypt. Um, I did name the Mega Fabina Robustum too, I named it Link. I didn't name the HNC, but here she goes. Beautiful specimen. Um, when I received her, she was missing her leg. You know, she was in really bad spirits, but as you can see, she is driving in here. I have a real plan inside of her enclosure. Then I separate that from the rest of the substrate. Try to help keep the mite uh, thing from not happening. See the nice size water dish cut for her and aligned with a uh, hot um, plastic to make sure there's no sharp edges. But yeah, she's um she's a beautiful, beautiful specimen. So on to the next T. Quick information. The reason why I keep those three tarantulas away from the other tarantulas is because they are more likely to have a mite infestation than any other tarantula since they're substrates have to be moist so because of that uh, I keep them away from the other tarantulas because the mites would almost it's highly unlikely that they would reach the other tarantulas with the carpet being on the floor and it being dry they need a very humid environment in order to thrive and survive so they probably wouldn't venture out from the enclosures and it would allow me to keep the mite population if there is an infestation and fingers crossed it there won't be uh, under control so that's the reason why I, I keep them where I keep them at. Alright, on to the next tees. Down here at this level we have my baboon spiders. And this is my C. Darlingi. Just experienced the moat not too long ago. And um, I don't know if you're going to see it down in here. That's actually its moat right there. But um, yeah, it's, oh, it's actually there. You see it moving a little bit. So yeah, it's down in there. I guess we won't get to see that. And I have my three P. Moranus OBTs. These are two slings. If we see, you see it, one right there. Okay. And um, another is. Oh, at the very bottom. 
right there all right so here goes two swing obts and i named it thing one and thing thing one and thing two the c dog energy name is narla i got that name from the lion king and this is my four inch uh sub adult female p moranis her name is rage i don't know if she's out of her enclosure because i seen her earlier and she is so let's see if i can get a beat on her you see her she's out and about and she's um webbing up here we have my brachypalma amelia let's look at her this is like my pride and joy one of my prized possessions here brachypalma amelia she has a roach in there she hasn't eaten it and i'm just gonna leave it in there she's a picky eater next one okay this is my brachypalma solipulsum um and this is a sling and this is my brachypalma vagus, the red rump. And these are four brachypalma apollosum slings. And um, they're in there. They're all in there working and doing what it is they gotta do. And this is my brachypalma apollosum. So the one I had the longest, fat baby, and she's had some size on her, but she's inside. So let's get on to the next tease. Okay, this is my Canthuscaria genicolata, and I think this will be molting soon. I've seen it uh, presenting behavior that it usually does when it molts, so this is it. Beautiful, beautiful specimen. Let's see. Okay, on to the next. This is my mature female, Acanthoscaria and Subtilis, the Bolivian Black Velvet. I named her Coco. And this is an enclosure for her male that I ordered, the mature male, Acanthoscaria and Subtilis. And um, this is her. Let's get a look at her. She's an awesome T. Very, very big girl. Doesn't like to be bothered at all. So yeah, there she has it, there she goes. Her enclosure. Okay. This is uh, more Brachypalmas here. This is my uh, adult female Brachypalma Smithy. This is my Brachypalma Smithy Sling. And this is my Brachypalma Smithy Sling as well. Xena, you have Sandy, you have uh, she doesn't have a name, so maybe you can give her the name, you two. And this is my Brachypalma Bomi. Uh, just waiting for this to molt soon. So, um, this is just a, uh, just received the molt. Let's get into it. Let's look at them. This is my adult uh, Smithy, Sandy. And she's a head kicker. And you can see her enclosure. Nice to set up, if I do say so myself. So that's her. On to the next bracky. This little slice of heaven just uh, molted earlier today. And she is uh, showing some great coloration. And I say she because I believe it to be a suspect female. So this is Xena. Um, on to the next one. This is the bracky palm of Bomi. Like I said, it's pre molt so we're not going to stay in here too long. Just let you see that and we get on to the next one. This is my Brachypalma Smithy Sling. It's not showing any colors yet, but by its knees it is getting a little bit lighter. So that's it. Let's go on to the next ones. Here we have my Chromatopalma Senior Pumbestis, my green bottle blue. Uh, named to Kayla after a friend of mine that is in Canada. And um, there are two more up here, two slings of Chromatopalma Senior Pumbestis, green bottle blue. This is Ninja. And this is a uh, chromatopelma senior pubescence. This is stamps. So let's get to look at them. Okay, here's Kayla. You can see she's definitely a hair kicker. And um, she's a beautiful, beautiful lady. Beautiful lady. As you can see, I have, she has an enclosure webbed up very, very nicely. You 
here, so let's get to the next ones. Okay, we're looking at stamps now. Stamps is about three inches since the last mold. Did a pretty, pretty good job molding. You see these webbed up as I close you pretty nice. Uh, stamps is a suspect female. Okay, let's get on Ninja. Okay, this is Ninja. I almost always see Ninja out and about looking around. Not minding Ninja's business. As you can see, he's done a great job since his last moment. And it looks to have food in his mouth. So we're going to close this back. On to the next. This tea is very skittish. This is my Focadaria fasciata. In fact, it's trying to run to its enclosure right now as I do the taping. I hardly never see this tarantula, so I doubt we get to open it and see it. So, but um, that's the Focadaria fasciata. Let's get on to the next one. That's Jaja. Here we have my Vicular Versicolor and I named it Tega. This is uh, Antilles Pinto. And we don't have to open the jar, we can actually just look at it right from here. Beautiful specimen. As you can see. Okay, on to the next one. Okay, next up we have my Vicularia Minitrix. This is the Venezuelan Red Slate Pinto. I'm definitely not going to open up this enclosure because this little guy is just very fast, but as you can see. In fact, let's see if we can get it without getting it thrown away. Look at that. Don't want to cheat you guys. Alright, on to the next. Here we have my Pocateria Sofusia, Lowland Ivory Ornamental, that I named Ivory. And if, even if I open the lid, still wouldn't see it. It's too much things covering it, but um, it's in there. It's alive. Everything's built with it. Okay, on to the next one. This is my Lapropelma Violosopes, a Singapore Blue. I named Baby Blue, and as you can see, there's a roach small enough to hide behind here. But I don't know how long it's going to live inside here because this guy is a pretty good hunter. As you can see, here it is. It's just all over the place in here. So you can see it has some pretty good size to it. It doesn't too much like the light. So we're going to get the light out of his face and let's get to the next one. Here we have my Pocatharia of Fuchsia, Highland, um, Ivory Ornamental. I named it Swift because one of my um, one of my uh, subscribers named it, and that's it. So if you have a name for my Avicularia Manatrix, please let me know. I'm taking names for that, and I'm taking names for other seeds that don't have names. Okay, we have a Salm Pomus Aramina. Venezuelan Sun Tiger, I've named Venom. Now, it's in here, there, but, you know, opening the lid is not going to do you any justice. Like I, like I said with the other tea, that there's just too much debris in here that, um, you see his abdomen. There's too much debris in here that, um, you won't be able to actually see the tea, so, on to the next one. This is my Salmopomus Camera G. My Trinidad Chevron, and you can see his legs right there. This um, little sling. So I, doesn't, I don't have a name for it. So if you want to give me a name, as long as the name's a unisex, I don't mind actually um, naming the transfer from what my subscribers, subscribers choose. So if you got a name, let me know. Okay, we have both my Pocateria Metallicas. This is real. And this is rain. Let's look at them. Okay. Let's see if we can get a look at her. We'll look at real. Beautiful, beautiful specimen. As you can see. Alright, on to the next. Okay, this is rain. 
and I think the, the rain is soon to mow. So I see a lot of weather going on. Usually this happens when they decide to mow. So I'm going to close this up. First, skittish. On to the next. Here we have my Pocatharia vitata, my female ghost ornamentum. I named her Storm. And it doesn't make any sense to open it up the enclosure because you won't be able to see her. She, or she has her own little thing she's made. And um, yeah, here she goes. Beautiful egg, right? Beautiful colors. Definitely one of my favorite teas. On to the next. This is my Tapakinius plumite. It's my Trinidad mahogany tree spider. I've named it Trini. And again, I can't open the lid. You won't be able to see it that way, but you're getting a good view from right here. And as you can see, she's a female and she is beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. Okay, on to the next. Okay, here we have one of my prized possessions, my Phonopelma peloloma. And I am the only person I've seen on YouTube with the actual video on the species. This is a dwarf munchkin, Chloe. And you see her trying to hang out a little hole here. Let's get this open. Okay, she is beautiful. This is a confirmed adult female munchkin. And um, she is beautiful. Out of all the teas, she's the one I would handle the most. She's my favorite when it comes to handling, of course. She's as small as maybe I'm a punk. On to the next one. Okay, here we have Mirafa species yellow. This is uh, Lucy. And I have Ricky's uh, enclosure over there. Um, consequently, Ricky and Lucy are in the same enclosure now because I am shark tanking them. So... I don't know what happened, but they've been here now, and that's the both of them. So, we'll close that back up. We'll get him in his enclosure later. It's been a while now. On to the next. Okay, here we have two Grandma Stola Poke Ripes. Uh, Choco Golden Knee. And here is one. That mold is not fresh. But it's a mold from, I believe, the end of last month. So, okay. And this one experienced the mold not too long ago. Okay, on to the next. Here we have a Grandma Stola Rosea. This is a Chilean Rose here, Tarantula. This is a rose color form. This was given to me by a friend um, on Facebook. Great guy. Let some notice the trenches being taken care of. She's beautiful. Okay, on to the next. And for my last tea, drum roll please. <laughs> My grandma solar rose, a regular color form, sugar baby. This lady here is the reason why I'm back in the hobby. But my fascination back for teas, look how beautiful she is. Absolutely huge for G Rosea. She's definitely bigger than the rose color form that I have. Um she's super huge. Um beautiful. Just look at her. She's um She's been aggressive, well, defensive, and docile. She's just very, very moody. So I have handled her, but I don't recommend handling any teas. But um, this girl here has a special place in my heart, and I love her a lot. She may not be my favorite species, but she is my favorite tarantula. So with that said, pay homage to Sugar Baby. Show her some respect. All right. Okay, these are the few other things that I have. You see, I have the humidifier that holds um, a gallon of water in it. I have my heater. I want to give my teas spring water to drink. This is for me to fill up this. Um, you see the spray bottle. I have like my little setup up here at the top. Tongs. I like to use this measuring tape because it folds up and it's very easy to put away. 
I have my glue gun. I have two uh, soldering, or two um, soldering uh, irons here. Gorilla tape. Uh, I use this to initially label each uh, enclosure because when they're smaller, they tend to need to be uh, cleaned a little bit more, and this can be wet and still will hold its integrity. Um, see the scissors. I have a big paintbrush. I have different kinds of paintbrushes, the, all different types of sizes. Just you know, just to fit my many needs. And I have a needle at this one, so when the little one closes, when they have food, it's at the bottom, like my HNC. I can actually just poke it down and just pull the food up. All the waste that's uh, there, the process there. Uh, tape the label. This needs to be out. And I have my all-purpose pliers, knives, everything's in here. You know, everything you need is in here. So, there are more flashlights in here too, as well. The two magnifying glasses, which allows me and assists me in, assists me in um, dissecting the teas once I get a moat. I have my gloves when dealing with the stermy. Big paintbrush, clean up um, whatever dirt is there. This is a mold I just got from a bracket bone with Smithy. And this concludes our video. Okay, YouTube, thank you very much for tuning in. If you've seen the update on my collection, uh, beautiful specimens. Um, I would like to give a shout out to John3800 for doing a review on my company, tarantulafacts.com. I appreciate it. I'd like to give a shout out to Steven Stamps of stampstarantulas.com for sending him the cool tea gear that you often see me wear as well through all my Facebook page. Um, I would like to give a special shout out to Rob C who has been blessing us in the hobby with uh, some photos and some kind words. He was very kind enough to help me um, during this month when I purchased the uh, Rachypoma Smithy female and um, it died in transit. So uh, I'd like to give a special thanks to him for just uh, words of encouragement and um, the help that he's given me. Uh, I'd like to give a shout out to my friend Monique. Again, she um, allowed me to post some of her specimens to uh, to um, our, to my website and I was receiving you know a little flack because people felt like I shouldn't use pictures off of Google uh, due to um, copyright infringements and so on and so forth but I'm going to just say this if you're taking pictures and they're beautiful pictures and you want the world to see them then there shouldn't be a problem uh, we're not making money off this website. No one is using this website as a get rich quick scheme. It's actually meant to help um, people that's coming in the hobby that um, are not really well versed in the hobby. You know, they don't know about arachnoids, and arachnoids can be kind of difficult to navigate for the novice uh, tarantula um, uh, hobbyist. So we made this website to help people that's coming in the hobby find a place where they can actually compare price, get help knowing what uh, the tarantula will be, how the tarantula will be, and, um, and also have different websites to choose from when they're purchasing the tarantula so they can compare prices. Um, the only thing I do is I sell ad space and that, that doesn't sell a lot but we do have incredible people up there that do have tarantulas that sell them and um, I advocate them. I personally received uh, tarantulas that I purchased from them so um, if I haven't purchased tarantulas from them then there has been extensive studying on the people that we do post their businesses and um, we've seen enough reviews we've seen reviews on Facebook from my hundred plus friends that's in the hobby um, we look on arachno boards we do diligent searches on the websites that we post because there are people that are coming in this hobby and they're scamming people and they're taking their money and they're running away with it so what we're trying to do here is we're trying to help people that's just coming into the hobby 
not get scammed and that's very important to us so that's the service we provide and um if you're upset that i've posted your picture i've since taken it down and i'm not going to offer an apology because if i'm infringing on your copyrights then what is google doing by posting the picture in the first place I mean, if I type in a tarantula's name and your picture comes up, then you're not getting paid by Google. Google's infringing on your copyrights. I'm only taking something that I saw to be beautiful art, and I wanted to represent the hobby and people coming in to see it, and I wanted them to see it and appreciate it as well. So I didn't mean any harm by it, so I'm not going to apologize. I'm sorry, but I'm not going to apologize. And that sorry wasn't for a sorry to you. It was a sorry to saying, no, it's just not going to happen. So with that said, this is Mark Twain's Franchler. You've seen my count of 43 minus the one that will be coming, which will make 44. So yeah, you've seen my tea collection. Um, you've seen how I take care of them, some things that I use. I appreciate you stopping by. And remember, this is Mark Twain's Franchler, franchlerfacts.com. Everything is gun smoke. Peace.